Hey everyone, John here. And Xbox have been struggling for positive news as of late. There have been many rumours about them going all digital, and that seems to be true. Many retailers are going to stop selling Xbox games. And of course last year there was that leak of the adorably all digital console. So that's one thing, but of course... As of late, there have been many rumours about some of their first-party games going multi-platform. This includes stuff like Hi-Fi Rush, and Starfield, and Gears of War. So why exactly is this happening? Well, it's not just one reason there's a few pillars holding this thing up, but a huge part of it is Game Pass. Game Pass has been pretty successful up until now. However, it appears to have stopped growing. They stopped sharing the numbers with us back in January of 2022, and the last known figure was 25 million. Some analysts predict that it's at 33.3 million now, but we have no idea. So what is stopping Game Pass from growing? There's definitely a few reasons to that as well. Um, first party output has been fairly into the future rather than in the present, and we did have a major game being Starfield, which didn't really move the needle. And I think you can trace a lot of this back to Starfield. Microsoft acquired Bethesda for $7.5 billion. And this company gave us mega hits like Skyrim and Oblivion. And that's not what Starfield was. It's a good game, many people are happy with it, but it didn't really have a cultural impact or a hardware or software impact either. And what's really interesting is something fairly big happened just before the launch of Starfield, being the Activision Trials. And in those trials, Phil Spencer was very transparent about what was going on at Xbox. There are big initiatives that they publicly push, like cloud gaming. But in these cases, Phil basically said there's no market for cloud gaming. It's something that hasn't been built up yet. So for every reason the FTC claimed that they couldn't acquire Activision, Phil basically just gave stats as to why those weren't true. He basically said that Xbox are in the weakest position of all the first parties, that cloud gaming doesn't have a future, that Game Pass growth isn't as steady as they expected. He basically just downplayed the entire company in order to secure Activision. And why I find this interesting is the outcome of all this was Call of Duty would have a 10-year contract with PlayStation. And why I find that interesting is why would you battle so hard for that if the plan for the future is to be multi-platform anyway? And I think that's really the ticket there, is back then, maybe that wasn't the plan. I think it's because they invested so much in Bethesda only for their core title not to pay off that they have planned to go multi-platform with at least some of their games. Xbox is in a very tough position, and Phil Spencer has said as much in the past. I mean, listen to what you said here in the kind of funny interview. But we are not in a position, and I, I see it out there, I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation, where everybody built their digital library of games. And he's not wrong. If Indiana Jones comes along and it scores like 96s, 98s on Metacritic, people aren't going to rush out and buy an Xbox because they're already so invested in the PlayStation ecosystem. It doesn't just take one game or two games or three games to change that. People have invested years into their lives of building these digital libraries, and these two systems are so similar. The vast majority of the games are the exact same. So how do you get that power back from PlayStation? And it turns out, I don't think you can. And so Xbox have been quite smart in investing everything into Game Pass. It's a big gamble, but it's their USP. It's the one thing you would buy an Xbox for. But Game Pass isn't really growing, so what do you do? Well, I think one big problem with Game Pass is it's hard to perceive the value when it's just all given to you, right? So like, if I were to ask you right now, like, how, how much does it cost to buy Starfield? Would you say £70? Because yeah, that, that's correct. Uh, how much is Halo Infinite on the Xbox Store? Well, it's just the campaign, but how much is it? It's £55. How much is Hi-Fi Rush? Do you, do you know how much that costs? It's £30. Do you know how much Forza is, the new Forza? That's £70 as well. The thing is, like, yeah, these prices are out there. You can go on the Xbox Store and buy Forza for £70 if you want to, but it's more of an illusionary wall. Very few people are actually buying these games. And this is something that many indie friends have said to me in the past. When they bring their games to Xbox, 
it's the weakest platform for them. Some of them just say that it's not even worth the investment because a lot of the Xbox audience have been conditioned to not buy games. And as someone who is a big physical collector, I've not bought a single physical Series X game. I have been conditioned to only play on Game Pass, and I'm someone who collects on every other platform, but Xbox for me is just this Game Pass machine. And that's kind of what they want. That's why they're going all digital in the future. If you go to buy an Xbox game, the biggest thing isn't the price, it's a big included in Game Pass icon. They don't want you buying one or two games a year, they want you constantly subscribed, trying new things and giving them a constant stream of revenue. But the problem there is, what do you do when people aren't buying Xboxes and aren't subscribing to Game Pass? Well, that's where I think putting things on other platforms does a lot for them. Suddenly Starfield, this £70 game, is actually £70. People on PlayStation are actually paying that price for that game. Hi-Fi Rush will actually be a £30 game. And then I think you see Game Pass in a different light. Like, it's not just a bunch of free games, like suddenly it's something that people on other platforms are paying a premium for. And especially as Activision games start to join the service, people who don't own a console yet may see Xbox and be like, well on Game Pass you get Call of Duty and Halo and Gears and Flight Sim and Spyro. <laughs> like that's like five games and if you add all that up that comes to like what $350? So to them, I think they may see that and get that more tangible perceived value and maybe even gravitate to Xbox. I feel said a lot over the years that exclusives don't really matter to them. They want to see less exclusives. In fact, as far back as like 2021, they've said they want to have Game Pass on everything. So I, this, is, this is not a surprise. The writing has been on the wall for a long time. And I think Starfield was just the thing that kind of kicked it all over in the end to make them finally go for it. But... I think this will genuinely build Game Pass, maybe even push Xbox console sales, because up until now, no exclusive that they've had has done a thing. Now you can argue that not that many exclusives are that powerful that they've had, like Redfall, of course, didn't have much power, uh, Pentiment, as great as it is, doesn't have much power, and when I'm looking at the future, like, Hellblade, I think the first game was great, but it wasn't a console pusher, and I don't think the second one will be either. Indiana Jones, perhaps. Um, Microsoft Flight Sim 2024. Not like, That's more something that you get when you already have the hardware. I don't think they really have that software that does that. So the next best thing is just to up the perceived cost and value of everything. So I don't think this is really going to harm Xbox at all. And I know some Xbox owners are upset that their console is losing its exclusives, but you're still going to have the exact same games that you are always going to have. Nothing's really changing. Like, you're still going to be playing Indiana Jones and Halo and Forza on the Xbox. Like, what, what's different apart from just knowing that other people are playing those games? Like, no, nothing changes. And of course, you still get Game Pass, which is what the system is all about now. They've gone way too far in to back out of Game Pass. They've made billion dollar acquisitions just to secure these games on Game Pass. It is what they're entirely about. But it definitely is worth considering what this is going to do to PlayStation. Because suddenly Xbox, who are already competing in a service bubble, is going to go even further into that service bubble. Making PlayStation, if it's not already, the de facto high-end console experience, just the default one. Which, again, it kind of already is. This does essentially mean that PlayStation will be unchecked in this market. And that's not a good thing. Competition is always good. And I do hope that more people will sort of gravitate to Xbox and Game Pass to just sort of ignite a bit more competition in there. But it is a bit worrying to think about the prospect of PlayStation just doing whatever they want, charging whatever prices they want, because they probably can after this kind of move. And yeah, that is definitely a side effect that is uh, not great for the industry. But just in terms of Xbox, I don't think this is going to ruin anything for them. I don't think anything's really going to change on the user end either. Like, if you're upset that you have put in... 20 plus years into your digital library, all those games are still going to be there. You can still be part of the Xbox ecosystem. Um, if anything, I think the lack of physical games is a bigger burn than this, but that's just me. Anyway, let me know what you think about the prospect of Xbox going multi-platform. Do you expect just a couple of games, or is this going to be their entire portfolio? Just as a player, I'm quite excited at the idea of playing Halo 3 on a handheld. On, if it's Switch 1 or Switch 2, that sounds great to me. Just the legacy Xbox stuff is very appealing. 
for taking on new form factors. But also, it's just great for more people to play some of these games. So whether you're on PlayStation 5 or Switch or Xbox, we kind of all win at the end. But yeah, let me know what you think, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everyone. Thank <sighs> you.